is it just me or do all these women look incredibly uncomfortable? Wrote another in part. The post has reached out to Alice for comment. Oh, this chick. <laughs> what is her name again? I covered her before. Uh, Drew Af Afulo. Afulo? I don't know. This chick. I, by the way, when I update my first book, the chapter on red flags under the segment uh, number 10, red flag number 10 with tattoos and piercings, we're going to be adding crazy ass fingernails. And I'm going to describe why when I do the revised version in that chapter. This chick is a total train wreck. Tattoos on the hand, long ass fingernails, loud, annoying, disagreeable. She's just one of those disgusting people that just picks up on everything and just has, a, has one of the most outrageous, raunchy statements and clearly doesn't like dudes anyway this check content uh, creator popular for online takedowns of controversial controversial men's responded to clips of whatever podcast and tiktok and what does she what does she say f this podcast for real a fuel said in one clip does this open into her clip no just a picture anyway content creator who counts eight million thinks her zingy clapbacks of misogynistic men is it's it's completely okay when you get these loud, disgusting women like this um, that have opinions about men for that to go viral and to celebrate that. But if a man on a podcast is asking a very average OnlyFans girl uh, a question like, you know, how many guys have you been with in the past? Then that is totally unacceptable, right? I mean, we can have one with Drew, but we can't have the other with Brian. But again, we're not dealing with society's best, you know, like this chick over here, not society's best. A lot of the panelists that they select for these podcast shows, not society's best. There's better women out there, but they wouldn't make for good shows, would they? In one clip, Afuelo stitches a snippet of Atlas calling a female panelist not a 10 in reference to her looks in which she says, that's just your opinion. Let's see if this will open and play. Okay. All right, so that did open and it will play for me. So let's watch this together to see what they're talking about here. Uh, so the caption is laughing in their face is much more effective, I promise. And here's a clip over here. And let's play this. Okay, so you think you're a 10? Yeah. Don't I think I'm gorgeous. I think I'm perfect. Listen, don't take this the wrong way. You're not Please a 10. Please lay it on me. You're, you're not a uh, now, look, in fairness, I don't think Brian is being unreasonable. She stated what she thinks her value is on the marketplace. And he's just feeding back saying, I don't want to be mean here, but I don't think you are. Let's keep going. Not a 10. Okay. That's just your opinion. I'm all right. First of all, <laughs> every time I feel like we... I forgot about this chick's laugh. I'm, I'm going to have to apologize to my audience in advance because you're going to have to tolerate the sound of Drew laughing. It's like, do you remember in class when a kid would go to the chalkboard? Maybe I'm dating myself because probably chalkboards don't exist in schools anymore, but they would scrape their nails down the chalkboard. This is what we're going to, sorry guys, but just to get to the point on this. Stamp out a roach, AKA a white man with a podcast like this. He contributes literally nothing other than his bigoted opinions that he thinks are new and inventive two more replace it like <laughs> you bitches are multiplying like bunnies huh but i digress you know what i mean this clip literally proves what i've said over and over and over again this man is looking in her eyes and telling her no offense you're not a 10. she's going that doesn't offend me that's just your opinion and there's this like pause where he's like did you hear me i just called you ugly she goes again just your opinion. It doesn't bother her that this fucking bitch who looks like he sells Bibles for a living thinks she's ugly. It Ad hom attacks immediately, right? This effing B that looks like he sells Bibles for a living. And he literally didn't say, you look ugly. That's not what he said. He just responded in what appears to me anyway, as an outsider viewing it, in relative kindness. Just putting it out there, just trying to be honest with you, but you're not a 10. That's all I heard bothers him that it doesn't bother her he like continues to try to antagonize her i'm not gonna rate you listen i'm not gonna rate you but if i were if i were gonna rate you it's not a 10 and this bitch doesn't fucking care not even a little bit and that's how you all should be you know why because social currency with men is fucking worthless bitch look at this man 
He could be 48 or 21. If I were to seek counsel on the opinions of good luck, why the fuck would I ask the general manager of State Farm, bitch? Like, why would I ask him? I wouldn't. See, that's the T. Men hate nothing more than when you don't give a shit what they think about you, especially when it comes to looks. Same thing goes for when they call you fat. You say that to me all the goddamn time. First of all, fat's not an insult. Second of all, I'd think that too if I still had to sit in a car seat. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, my response to that is send me a picture of you. I love to talk about what other people look like. <laughs> I'll do it for free, bitch. Their opinions of me especially and my looks are worth nothing more than white dog shit, bitch. Instead of going on godforsaken podcasts like this one, tell them to crawl back in that sewer, bitch. Those kids aren't going to eat themselves. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the reference that uh, the author of the article, the journalist, uh, linked. So let's go back to her article and continue on because she's pretty disgusting, to be honest with you. Anyway, Afulo stitches a snippet of Atlas calling female panels not a 10 in reference to her look, in which she says, that's just your opinion. Imagine using Afulo as a point of reference. This is the point of reference that she's using in her argument. Not much better than some of the panelists on these shows, to be honest with you. Uh, that's just your opinion. In response, Atlas continues to reiterate his stance on her attractiveness because it bothers him that it doesn't bother her. And like again, like this goes back to the point of these. A lot of these podcasts are trying to hold women accountable. Like you're not a ten, but I'm a ten. Well, that's your opinion, but I'm a ten. Well, in all honesty, you're not a ten. No, but I'm a ten. She's not going to change her opinion of herself. The creators of podcasts sitting these women down must know by now that they're not going to change their opinion of, them, of themselves. It's just to spark interest. Like when I was younger, we had TV shows like Maury Povich, Jerry Springer. Again, I'm dating myself, but it seems like a lot of these podcasts and the panels that are put together and the topics that they talk about, like I'm just waiting for a podcast that comes up on the internet with, with panelists where it's like, and you are the father or and you're not the father and everybody erupts and there's a fight on stage and bouncers have to come in and pull them apart like they did on the Jerry Springer show. It's it's like one or two steps away from that, if we're being honest, like this is the direction that it's going. Anyway, uh, snippets, just your opinion in response. Atlas continues to read his stance. OK, fine. And another Afulo responds to a video of the whatever podcast featuring Atlas's claims that men are more oppressed than women. Why people why people continue to go on this podcast, I just can't even begin to understand. I'll tell you why they go. The panelists go on for the attention. Um, these are girls that are looking to, you know, broadcast themselves. And they'll run uh, maybe an OnlyFans and have a social media presence on Instagram or on Twitter. They'll post some teases about who they are. And, I mean, they got to be getting business because... From a business perspective, if you keep going back and doing something over and over again, there's got to be an ROI. Like I know for a fact, whenever I would have run ads in the past on my debt business, I would usually use social media, sometimes pay-per-click ads, but even like Facebook ads, you know, for example, when I ran those like 10, 15 years ago, um, we would continue to reinvest in placements that paid off and we would pull back on placements that didn't have a return on investment. But these girls, they keep going back on the show. So to pretend like they are not getting something out of it, I think that's disingenuous. And whoever this journalist is has not done the research. Again, I think a lot of mainstream media, and I don't know if the New York Post would be considered mainstream media, but a lot of these journalists today, they're just sloppy, right? Um, we saw what happened when the BBC tried to interrogate Tate. Uh, my understanding is uh, PBD and uh, Sosnick were just there recently from what I saw on social media. So that'll be an awesome interview. Looking forward to getting some real perspective versus uh, hit pieces. But, you know, this is what you get with journalism today and pieces like this. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle, if I can put it that way. Um, F this podcast for real. Another picture of the panelists here. Whatever isn't the first podcast of its kind to ignite frenzy fury online or as Vice put it, the fuel, sorry, fuel the gender culture war. war. There's been a look. There's been a, cult, a culture war long before 
uh, dating podcasts ended up on the internet, on video platforms, on YouTube, on Rumble, or wherever it is they happen to broadcast. It's called toxic feminism. And the gender war has started a long time ago, decades ago. And it is not about equality. It's not about improving you know, the lives of women at this point. It's about the subjugation and servitude of men, right? They want guys to basically bend the knee, apologize for things that they've never done, accept accu accusations for um, anything, you know, at this point without proof now, even going back 10, 20 years, you know, in some cases, I'm surprised somebody hasn't accused Jesus of doing something wrong, you know, like a hashtag me too at this point, but it's been going on for a long time. And I think all that's really happened is, you know, some of these podcasters have figured out, well, we'll get a table, a bunch of mics, some bratty entitled girls will serve them some booze. Do you guys see these cups here? These are, these are mostly not water. If you watch these shows and the way these women behave, especially in long format, when you get to the other clips, you know, deeper down the rabbit hole, a lot of them are inebriated. And I don't know if it's alcohol or if it's weed or, or what they're on, but it looks like a good portion of them that are on the show are offside. The interesting thing about that is, isn't alcohol the most honest truth teller that exists out there? It just removes filters. If somebody's an absolute and complete asshole, then getting them drunk will make them an even more absolute and complete asshole. If they're an entitled brat, they'll become even more of an entitled brat. And I think this is when you see a lot of these guests, you know, thrown off the show or uh, Frank Castle or whatever they're, you know, they're calling it. But this is, you know, this is part of the play. It's a, it's a simple recipe. Find entitled bratty women that have a strong opinion of themselves that's well beyond what their SMB would be in the real world. Ideally, that have a high notch count. Ideally, that do things online like uh, OnlyFans, you know, for example, or maybe cam work or whatever it happens to be. Uh, but they have a reason to be there so that they can, you know, hashtag, you know, follow me wherever. Uh, let them drink, you know, if it's available, it seems. And when they get out of hand, throw them off the set. Boom. Anybody can do that. You guys right now, if you want to do that, can set up your own podcast and do the exact same thing. TikTok and Twitter flooded with snippets of talk shows, men in their living rooms with microphones. <laughs> Is that what they call this? Let me just click that and see where that takes me. Oh, we're back to Drew Afaguileo. Let's see what she has to say. So this one takes me to... A man, Gadzi. Uh, that's interesting because he seems to be one of the safer guys. So let's see why they hyperlink this. Anyway, this is back in the lab. So this is this uh, mouthpiece here. Let's see what she's going to say here. Uh, we'll speed it up a little bit. We got volume and play. You were born nothing and no one will ever do anything for you. As a woman, because we're basically all the feminists are non-attractive women who are like, yeah, but I don't get anything. It's like, well, yeah, okay, you also don't go to the gym ever. Profound. <laughs> I remember this guy. I fucked up your friend, right? The dude sitting across from you that has a taint for lips. Yeah, I remember the two of you. <laughs> I also remember the two of you saying that that clip was taken out of context after I ethered your fucking video, right? Shocker. I was right about the two of you being the worst. This video was a train wreck from start to finish. <laughs> First up, when you're saying, as a man, you're born with literally nothing. I'd argue that anyone, regardless of gender, is born with nothing. <laughs> like, that's pretty standard for all babies, you know? You're acting like you're a fucking sea turtle, like your mom hatched you on the beach and then was like, I'm fucking deuces, figure it out. What are you, a deer? <laughs> Love the drag towards fat women for literally no reason at all. I'm also born without anything. Cool, have you tried going to a fucking gym, fatty? <laughs> Sound logic, brother. <laughs> You then go on to spin a yarn. Can you hear that? The world's tiniest fucking violin. How not only is it not hard being a woman, but that you yourself have no privilege whatsoever. And there's been a targeted attack on all men. When it comes to that last thing, at me next time. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm not even going to get into the nuances of privilege because based off the H&M fit, I can tell that brain is fucking void of all and any intersectionality whatsoever. But I will say this. Admitting that you have privileges in this life does not mean that you've never struggled. It means there's not also invisible barriers that prevent you from succeeding and living a happy and fulfilled life. In an extremely big world run by cishead white men but we're gonna water it down completely because also based off the cut that's as far as the brain can go get lined up bitch you're overcomplicating things no one's telling you to apologize for being a man they're telling you to apologize for being insufferable which clearly you're very unaware of <laughs> instead of crying to the internet about how unfair it is that women are treated better than you maybe worry about the fact that you look like the world's worst fancy football manager <laughs> you look like you follow those inspirational businessmen accounts on instagram you look like you wear a fedora on vacation <laughs> And you also look like you think your hands are really attractive. You have other more important things to worry about is my fucking point, bitch. Or to avoid all of this, you can just fuck off, you know? <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
You were born. So, I mean, where do I even start with that? I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised that that is linked as a resource in this piece of journalism. Drew Afoglio. I haven't had anything good to say about her in the past, to be honest with you. And uh, linking to that stuff is pretty disappointing. It says, uh, read, men in their living rooms with microphones was a hyperlink uh, that are prompting women to mock them and beg them to stop giving men microphones. Um, that was a very reasonable snippet with Iman in it. I don't know too much about him from what I've seen online. He's a successful 23-year-old entrepreneur. Good for him. Um, he's being criticized by an obese walking red flag, essentially. Uh, you could go through my red flag chapter, and I would imagine you'd find at least a dozen on this uh, TikToker, Drew. Prompting the mock. Okay, let's wrap this up. Essence of Girls United with Kenyatta. Victoria this week pointed out that everyone seems to have a podcast these days. What was once a space where people could report and speak on specific topics with experts has become an opportunity for someone to project their emotions and opinions that don't evolve them, Victoria wrote, urging viewers to amplify those who approach the craft ethically and responsibly rather than constantly fueling the ego. I would agree with this line over here. Approach the craft of podcasting ethically and responsibly rather than constantly fueling the ego. Fueling confirmation biases, fueling egos. Look, I've already covered enough out of that article. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here, that clip's from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment, you'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books, and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.